Hello and welcome to another Blender video tutorial. My name is Jonathan Lampelt, and today we're going to be learning how to detail fractures with particles. So this is a really simple concept and it shouldn't take too much time. So to start off, I've already had this scene. Um, if you don't know how to fracture objects or um, go through the whole rigid body thing, I um, I recommend you go back and watch my older tutorials like you know fracturing glass, fracturing wood, fracturing complex objects, and that should answer any of your questions. So, um, I won't be going over that because that would be kind of a waste of time if you already know what to do. So basically, um, I wanted a little bit more interesting um, object than a sphere or a cube or whatever, so I chose Suzanne. Uh, definitely looks like she's not having a good day, but that's okay. It serves as a very good, very good test. So, uh, if you look at this from the side view here, you can see that while this looks like a fairly good, you know, fracture, and it might do okay in, in a you know simple animation, if you're trying to incorporate this into a live footage or a really detailed uh, animation or even a still image, it's not going to look all that great because there's not much detail. Uh, one of the things you need to um, have a lot of to make something realistic is detail. And in this case, uh, if I were to, you know, have you know more re recursions in my cell fracture or something like that, uh, it would take a really, really long time. So what we can do is use particles. Uh, this is something that's in Houdini that you can, you know, set an option for um, and, and kind of work with it through the through the node system that way to have particles come out of your um, fracture upon impact. Um, and there's something that we can do that's very similar to this in Blender. And so it's sort of a workaround, but it works very, very well. So what we're going to be doing is selecting an object. I chose this one right here because it's very uh, inside and whatever particles come out, we're not going to see them immediately, which is exactly what we want. And it's a nice, you know, big, randomly shaped piece. So I'm going to choose that one, but really it can be almost any piece you want. Uh, just make sure it's near the um, point of impact. So I'm going to add a particle system to this. And um, just to make sure that the particles don't bounce on the ground, I'm going to add a collision object here, which I had already done when I was testing, but I'm going to add a collision object there. Make sure the uh, dampening is up to about 0.75, somewhere around there. That way they don't bounce up super high. And the particle friction you want to be about 0.25. That way they don't slide all the way across the floor. So with that being said, we can now select um, our object with the particles. There we go. And begin to tweak them. So, first of all, we have to see what time exactly we want them to be released at. And it looks like the bat hits right about at 17 and 18. So, let's start at 17 and end at 18. Alright, so we have that established. That was pretty simple. Um, I'm going to have it emit from the volume without even distribution, make it random, so even though it won't make a whole lot of difference, it'll at least help a little bit, uh, make it a little bit more random, because we don't want it to be you know, a big sphere of particles. That doesn't look realistic at all. And now, um, you can see that it certainly works, but they just kind of fall and they don't follow the, the rest of the animation. And for this, we're going to have to set the velocity. But this is something that's pretty cool and I actually just discovered um, is we can set the velocity to the speed of the object as it's moving. So if I set this to say 0.75 and it hits and bam, not only are the particles moving, but it's mov they're moving at the um, speed and the direction of, you know, what at which this particle is now moving. So you can assign this to different particles if you want and get a whole bunch of different um, different I don't know systems um, to have more detail but we're just going to use this one for now but this is really nice because no matter what object you have it's always going to be going in the right direction. So This is very very cool and now um, it looks like it's a little bit clumped together a bit too much so what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it a random value of maybe about 5 and take the normal normal um, velocity down to 0. Now when we play this back it's going to look a whole lot better. 
and bam, we now have a lot more, um, a lot more shards. And we could play with this a little bit more if we wanted to, maybe not quite as much um, object velocity. But that doesn't look like it's quite enough, so I think 0.75 was almost perfect. Okay, so now that that's good, uh, one of the things we have to do is make each of those individual particles look like it's, you know, actually a shard. And there's a really, really simple way to do this, and all we have to do is... Um, box select some of these shards down here deselect the plane we don't want that shift D to duplicate them move them to another layer by pressing M and in this layer we're going to select one of them to make them the active object so that we can remove them from the rigid bodies so now they are no longer um, dynamic and we can select all of them press control and G to make a new group and you can see that in group view up here it is now called group I can control click and name this shards. Then I can move back to this layer, select the particles, in the particle settings go down to render, and here I can choose group and shards 002 I believe because I had some earlier, yep. Okay so that was pretty fast but you get an idea of exactly how quickly you can do stuff like that um, and it just is very fast and very easy to do. So, uh, now you can see that they're there, but they're a bit too small, so I'm going to pull them up to about, say, 0.5, and that looks about right. And I can take, you know, they're a bit too, too uniform in scale, so I can change the random size, take that all the way to 1, and that way you get these very, very small particles and the larger ones as well. And so now if I deselect it all and play this back, it's going to look a whole lot better. And you can see that instead of having a very simple animation of fractures, we now have a very complicated, well not very complicated, but we have a more detailed uh, and more realistic result. And it took like less than five minutes of work if you're you know, not explaining it, explaining every step that you're doing. So uh, this is just a, a very quick tip, but it's really, really helpful um, and it looks great. And there's not really much else to say, so I hope you learned something from this tip. Um, I'm hope you enjoyed. If you did consider subscribing and liking the video, if not, then uh, leave a comment, ask questions, whatever. Um, and thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.